What's up guys? We are here today, the first actual sunset of our BVS Arizona tour. Absolutely excited. You guys that have watched this channel, you guys know this location. One of my favorites overlooking Lake Powell. And uh, we're not getting great conditions, no clouds in the sky yet, but I can't wait to see what these guys get. Super excited. Um, the, both vehicles made it, which is I'm very happy about. A uh, little bit of a gnarly road, of course, like you guys probably know. And yeah, let's see how this, uh, this thing starts off. So we got a lot of the participants all setting up over here and uh, one of the things that I was telling a couple of the guys is similar to a concept like the Grand Canyon, it's not always trying to include everything because there's so many great things about this uh, big lookout here and when you try and include everything, it all kind of shrinks down, you lose scale. So the thing is, is find something that you like and then figure out how to take that photo. If you have a subject, make it the subject because if you start trying to include everything including your subject, that subject gets smaller and farther away and you have a hard time finding out what the actual subject is. So if you find something you like, then build your composition around that subject, pick out details, and then also kind of it's reactionary too as the light changes, kind of watch what it's doing. You're gonna see shadows and things like that kind of changing and uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to shoot I think, a little bit overwhelming because there's just so much to shoot here when these, you have these big kind of lookouts like this. But uh, yeah, it's kind of simplifying everything and that's kind of the way to go I think. What do you think about this spot, BVS? It is so challenging. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too big and open. Lots and lots of, like it's beautiful to look at, but it is a mission. And I wish I had my 400 millimeter lens. Yeah. Yeah, reach out and touch some of those details, huh? Touch it. All right, guys, so I'm set up here actually with uh, BVS's tripod and camera. He's uh, running out to a peak here. Uh, he's got a 70 to 200 on and he's going to put himself in the frame to kind of give some scale. We got Steptoe Butte kind of in the uh, in the background and it's gonna, it looks like it's going to be an awesome shot if he can make it. He's got a long walk uh, to make it up over there and the light's fading really, really fast. But it looks absolutely beautiful. Well, I didn't take any photos of my own for this sunset, but I did take a bunch of blurry ones for Brendan, so hopefully one of them works out. Uh, it looked really nice though, absolutely beautiful light on there. Uh, we got some beautiful light on Navajo Mountain in the background. Uh, probably gonna shoot here for another 15, 20 minutes, I think. Once that light goes down, we're gonna kind of head back and uh, we'll see you guys for sunrise. from the beautiful hoodoos here. We're at the Toadstool Hoodoos for sunrise. I'm uh, pretty happy and then uh, surprised. We drove five hours yesterday to our hotel in Page, another two hours to Alstrom Point, shot sunset two hours back, and then everybody's up again, ready to go in the hotel at 6 a.m. Drove out here, hiked about 20 minutes. Uh, just getting out here kind of uh, right at the last minute, so I'm gonna try and set up and find something here. Uh, what an absolutely beautiful place though. A lot of beautiful patterns on the foreground. Uh, really cool sandstone, so yeah, I'm gonna set up now and see if we can find something. Oh, what a hectic morning. Uh, so the, the conditions got really crazy. What happened is we're up against a wall on the north, a really high wall kind of back here. 
and all of a sudden some clouds came in that we didn't see and they came in really fast. Um, there was like no clouds in the sky. We were kind of facing opposite of where the sun was going to come up to get some nice color and it kind of just exploded around everywhere. So I was kind of running around making sure everybody got their shots and I got a shot and I think everybody's pretty happy. It was just, it was just kind of a madhouse for a little while. But uh, what an absolutely beautiful place this is, and uh, I think we all got some really good shots. I can hear people kind of yelling and yipping and, and stuff like that. They're happy, so uh, yeah, we're still actually has some color kind of back here a little bit. You can see uh, we got the actual full moon was two nights ago. Last night, it's not quite a full moon, but it's setting right now, so maybe we'll put on a long lens and see if we can't get that full moon maybe uh, with some of these hoodoos. But, Ah, what a great, great morning. This is our first official sunrise here and it's just, oh man, the conditions were absolutely epic. So one thing to note guys, when it comes to composition, a lot of times the conditions can determine what your composition is gonna be and you can kind of make little adjustments depending on the composition, whether it's maybe clouds, uh, in, a, in a certain shape, framing a subject, or we got a full moon and you know, like earlier, we were kind of facing one direction or we we're kind of having a couple of shots and then you see these clouds kind of move in really fast, catch a lot of light and color and it changes. So you got to kind of be a little bit flexible and, and probably get a little bit here a little bit earlier than we did. But uh, just have a couple of things picked out, different directions. And then if you have a composition, but then the light's better in another way, if there's a composition that way, um, it's better to, to do that than to kind of just be stubborn and to hold on to one composition if there's not going to be the light. So, and that's kind of what happened today. I had a shot set up and then the light kind of was going on and the color was going on in another direction. So I did like maybe about a 40 degree kind of switch of direction to face the, the same subject but a different direction where the light was, found a good composition with some foreground and it worked out really nice and right now I got the long lens on at 70 millimeters and I would never shoot this scene but because there's a full moon it just makes it really nice and kind of the farther you get away from a subject when you're shooting a full moon the farther you are away from a subject the bigger that moon's going to appear in relation to that subject so uh, i can't get any farther back so that's why i'm at 70 millimeters but generally you'd like to be you know if you're shooting with a long lens at 200 millimeters you want to be as far away from your subject as you can get because that moon's going to be that much bigger uh, if you have that reach of course you may need a longer lens than that 200 to 500 or, or longer if you want that really big moon so the farther away you get, the bigger that moon's going to be in relation to that subject. That I've been here during the day, so to be able to come here now at like really good light, good conditions. This place is absolutely beautiful. It's not very big. Maybe a 15 minute hike off the road. And really unique and really cool rock patterns everywhere. And uh, like it's all sandstone, it's all real kind of soft and real, so you gotta be careful. Uh, and it's just, like I said, it's, it's absolutely amazing. Lots of really tall hoodoos, uh, lots of smaller ones with all the patterns and stuff. So there's plenty to shoot here. You can shoot in all different directions, you know, north, south, east, west, doesn't matter. Even though there's this rock wall kind of behind us here, uh, it still makes for a really good subject once it starts catching that light, especially if you got good conditions and good clouds back there. So, oh man, what an absolutely beautiful morning. Well, David, how'd we do? It's like ice. Oh, there's too much. <laughs> Every time you see something, and you, you have an idea, like, I guess keep the camera set up for that shot. Uh -huh. Everything changes, right? You walk over and you go, oh, you should try that one. <laughs> yeah. Problem to have. What do you think, BVS? That light was pretty epic. I think I got five photos. Yeah, it changed really <laughs> fast too. You're like, oh, it's like a machine gun. Totally different photos. Five different photos. And the moon was cool for a bit too. Just a little bit high in the sky. Yeah. What about you, Jay? How'd you do? I did really well. I not so kind of like when you just shot nature when you were out. You're doing your nature, and you said the professional does five, and you did 500. It was a lot the same way for me. He said he got five. I probably did 50. <laughs> I got a little, a little happy, but yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Happy. Yep.
bombshell. guys we are here in white pocket this is actually our second trip but you guys will not see the first one because I had a memory card issue actually a memory card reader issue uh, had a loose connection and kept uh, kind of shorting out and it ended up I ended up losing all my footage tried to recover it with some software couldn't do it so luckily just ended uh, one sunset really so not too much of a loss and it was just eclipse on here so we are here in beautiful white pocket we had a an absolutely crazy drive in. Uh, some of the worst conditions I've seen that road, just because of the uh, the mud and the snow that's been happening here, and then it kind of drying or uh, melting, and then just absolutely soupy roads, really deep ruts. And the hardest part of the trip here is usually that sand. It was actually the easiest part this time because that sand actually gets hard and compacted when it gets really cold and wet. So we are here. No clouds in the sky, of course, but. Gonna challenge these guys is kind of still trying to get something, not worrying about the sky. See what we can find. Well, saw this one. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I've already set up on my first composition here. Took a shot. And what I've done here is I've switched my camera profile to, to black and white just so I can kind of get a preview of what it's going to look like. And uh, right now this photo is all about the patterns, the contrast, and the lines here. What we have is all these beautiful patterns in this sandstone leading up to these two peaks here. And I filled the entire frame from the bottom of the image all the way up through to the peaks are all about these patterns leading up to these peaks of which are my subject. I've got this deep blue sky right behind it there and black and white it's gonna look absolutely fantastic because I'm shooting while the sun is still up. I'm using those shadows uh, on these patterns and on these lines with that and adding that contrast is really gonna look good in black and white. So I think I've already knocked out my first image. I think it's time now to move on to the next one. It's just too far away. Just look at mine, Mike, and then look at hers, and then whisper in my ear which one's better. Okay, now go look at hers. Or no, give me a sign. That two means two means mine, and one means hers. You think hers is better? I like that. See that here, all that mm -hmm. red, and and I think it hugs I in this one. I think they're both great. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a dick. You're so Swiss. You're so Swiss. <laughs> no, Swiss people would tell you like it is, and then they'd tell you to get off their lawn. <laughs> Alright guys, so after my very first shot, I kind of wandered around. I really wasn't really sure what to do. So what I usually do in stuff like this is I find one of the participants and steal their composition. That's why I like to walk around a little bit first before I settle in on a shot. And uh, my buddy Dave back here had a really good shot. So I've kind of modified it, moved it up a little bit, faced a little bit of a different direction, but you know, talking to him and seeing how he kind of composed his and, and uh, it was just, it was really nice. So I'm kind of set up now, similar to what I did yesterday uh, in the last time that we were here, hoping that, man, I get a little bit different light or some color. I think the sky is gonna be really nice with the color. I think we're gonna get some nice blues and magentas and maybe some kind of golden colors and uh, hopefully use that in the sky. Got some leading lines leading up to this, uh, these really nice rock formations. So yeah, now it's just kind of waiting and seeing what happens.